story, character. It's that is in, in television, what you're pitching is something that is, is, has a potential to continue on for years. And that is, uh, yes, you need the, the concept, but what drives, what keeps something on the air for years, what drives that storytelling is character. And uh, you could have the most fascinating, you know, sci-fi, mythology, whatever it is. Um, but if you don't have uh, characters that, that uh, lend themselves to story, that bring story to the table, um, I think people who are hearing the pitch are, aren't going to be able to, they're going to be going, well, what happens in year three? What happens in year five? So it's a very uh, different kind of pitching than in features, I think. You're looking at the longevity of the, of the characters. Uh, you're looking at, at bringing enough complications to the storytelling that um, it, it, there's going to be a, a roads for writers to travel he heading down the path. You know, you want to populate your show with as many um, interesting different characters and each character having a facet. I think that's one of the things that people um, overlook are secondary characters. As you think, oh, you have this great, you know, doctor or lawyer and he's got all these problems and it's like, okay, well, we're going to tap out of those in the first 10 episodes and now you need all your other characters. And if you've just put a character in there that's, she's a really nice wife, you're going to be pulling your eyes out by the time you get to episode 10 because you, there's, you've just created this utterly uninteresting character. I don't care how interesting your actress is. Um, so secondary characters are incredibly important. The ensemble is important. There's also the element of you, you can't work an actor that hard, you know. You, you just, uh, having, having been on a show called Dexter and a show called Jessica Jones, these are, uh, you, you know, you're, you're never, you, it, certainly in your first season, the stories are, the, the ones that are going to pull people in are the ones that are about Dexter or about Jessica Jones. You have to earn your secondary storytelling so that you can cut away from them. I mean, I, you know, the first couple of years of, of Dexter, I, Mr. Hall was, was just exhausted. And the first season of Jessica Jones, you know, I think Kristen Ritter was just clawing her way back home. <laughs> We'd beaten the hell out of her. Um, incredibly game uh, actor, but you, you just, you're, you're, again, you're looking at longevity in television. You know, we started with incredible source material, uh, the Alias comic books, uh, which are beautifully written, and there's this beautifully drawn, uh, fit, literally and otherwise, uh, character of Jessica Jones. So, the pitch in the pitch having that that source material, so, certainly for me as a as a writer having that source material, but also you know, being able to draw from that, and there's a visual there. There's a you know that's always super helpful. Um, and yeah, the challenge of that one was that the source material is incredibly dark, and I wanted to do that. So I, you know, in our initial pitch to ABC, um, ABC Network, I, you know, had the had the book and was saying, "This is as dark. I want to go this dark and further." And they're like, "Sure, let's go." And then, of course, when it uh, uh, was written, it's like, eh, "It's a little dark." <laughs> So um, it was very serendipitous because it ended up at Netflix, which was the right home for it. Uh, but that goes to a really important point for producers is making sure the material is at the right place. You know, um, I, you know, if your show is a wildly character-driven um, show, CBS may not be the best play f place for it. They may want to bring that to the network, but they, you know, that's not where their strength. If yours is a really dark, damaged person, cable might be the place to go. Showtime or, or Netflix, you know, it's a dilemma because you got to go. I mean, you know, you, you often don't have a choice. You're just like, they want to buy it, I'm going there, you know. Um, but I, you know, having the right, the, the right show for the right outlet is um, obviously essential to success. Um, 
Well, you brought up the point of diversity, and I think that is essential. Um, really looking at bringing different voices to the table, um, something new is you know essential. Um, I think you you get that the diversity of storytelling from hiring or partnering with diverse people <laughs> who have very different backgrounds, and I think that is uh, essential. I know you know in in hiring my writing room, um, I at, that was absolutely the most important thing for very practical reasons, which are I, ha I, I don't need a bunch of people like me, you know, um, I want, I don't need all white guys, I don't need all white women, I need a really balanced, so that they're coming from different points of view and, and bringing something new to the table. So that is, that goes to longevity as well. <coughs> you know, it's really uh, who you're collaborating with is, is essential. Well, I went to uh, the USC Peter Stark program in producing, uh, so I have a master's in producing, that's where I started. Um, I was already a writer before I, I went to that graduate program, um, but felt like I, I wanted some other, some chops to uh, add to that. <coughs> I wasn't interested in directing, because I wanted some control, is really what it came down to. Um, but, you know, there's only so much you can learn about producing is doing. I mean, it's, it's so, you, you, I'm still learning insane amounts of things. You know, the, the higher up the ladder you go, the more it lands on your plate. And uh, uh, just sort of a shocking, shocking things that, oh my God, had I, had I thought that through, I could have figured that out. But um, it's, uh, I think being a writing producer, in television, that is the essential core. That is who, you know, in features, it's the director is, is God. Um, in television, the writer, writer-producer is God, you know, and which is why I like television. Um, it's, it's, you are the one who, are, who is uh, following the story, you're the only one who's following the story from beginning to end over the course of years, you know. Uh, and that's it's so story-driven, that is why I think television is a great place for that. And being on the set and working with actors, working in post, all of the things that you do as a producer, um, it's all part of the storytelling. So it's, you know, I think that the most important thing as a writing producer in television is to get onto shows where the showrunner is inclusive. You know, you have producers like John Wells, for instance, who, uh, you know, has this tremendous reputation as, as bringing writers up, bringing producers up. So I know if I hire someone who's coming out of the John Wells camp, this is an experienced producer. That person was, you know, in prep, on the set, in post. Um, and, you know, so that's really essential. I've also been on shows uh, where all your job is is to write, which is great. But you, you really want that experience. That on, not, you want a showrunner who is who's going to mentor you on the set and in post and really talk to you about how it's done. It's, it's not something you just pick up, you know, <laughs> as much as we like that. It, it, you really, it is a craft and it, it takes a lot of work.